Hello Mini Pilots, my name is Paul Tace. In today's video, we are going to be looking at editing our Mavic Mini's footage in the DJI Fly app. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is download our pictures. So we're going to hit the playback icon, or we're going to go and select all the videos we want. And then once we've done that, we can hit download. Uh, now, it's important to make sure you've got enough space on your phone before you download them. Otherwise, you just won't have enough space and you might be able to load them afterwards. So click that and then hit download. So this can take quite a while. I think it took me over 10 minutes, so I'm going to speed this up. You don't need to see it go really slowly. And then once we've done that, we can keep going out and by hitting back in the top left hand corner and back again until we get through to the menu screen. And then we can go down the bottom left and click album, then press create. We can then go over to pro. And then from here, we can then choose all the clips we want to be in our video. It's worth mentioning here that it's going to go in numerical order onto our timeline. So if you want them in a certain order, press that one first and go on from there. So these have all been added to the timeline down the bottom here. And if we press play, we can see it scrolls through at real speed. Uh, if I then drag the bottom timeline backs and forwards with my finger, we can choose exactly where we want to be. Now if I push out with my fingers, we make the timeline wider, and if we pinch in, we can make the timeline smaller again. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, just check through, make sure we've got our footage here, and then we've got to decide what piece we want to start with. So I want to start off uh, by zooming through in the woods and ending up on a little hut I found. So I'm going to find this piece of footage by scrolling backwards and forwards through the timeline. And I'm going to hold down that piece of footage and then drag it to the front. So if we want to move one piece of footage forwards, we can hold it down, it selects it, and then we drag it to the left. So now I've got my first two pieces of footage in order. I'm going to repeat this process by searching through for the piece I want. Okay, this is going to be my uh, starter clip, so I'm going to hold this down and then I'm going to drag it to the front. I've accidentally, um, <laughs> I'm having real trouble grabbing it actually. I find this app really difficult to use. It can be quite fiddly. I felt it was important to show people this uh, just so you get an idea of what you're getting yourself into before you start editing. But um, overall, I found it was a good piece of software. Okay, so now that's at the front. Um, I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to decide where I want the clip to start. So I've just hit the play button and now we're going to see where I want the film to start, which is just here. Oh, thanks, Joe. Right. So we're going to go back. And just as the camera starts moving here, I'm going to pull back to that part and I'm going to stop the camera. So here it is. And then down the right hand side over here, I'm going to hit the cut button with the scissors. I'm going to click there and this will split the footage into two pieces. Now I don't need the first part. So what I can do is scroll up on the right hand side and hit the delete button. And there we go. This is our first clip almost finished. The next step is then to decide where we want this clip to finish. Now to do this, I'm actually going to want to time it to music. So um, what I'm going to do is I accidentally hit the wrong button there. I'm going to hit the music on the right hand side and this is going to bring up all the options of music. Now I did actually find that the uh, library they have here is pretty awful. Um, <laughs> there's lots of different music you can choose from, but none of it was that great. You can import your own music, which I'd highly recommend you doing. But for the purpose of this video, I feel it's important to show I can do it all on my phone. So that's what I'm going to do. So um, after going through a few, I decided to go into the cheerful tab. And uh, from there, I chose a track called For You. Once you've decided you've got the right piece of music, just press use and it will drop it straight onto your timeline. So this is what we've got now. So from here, I'm going to want to decide to find where all the beats are in the music. Now you'll notice on the right hand side, all our icons have changed and there's one now called a rhythm. If I click rhythm, it brings up this screen here. On this screen, you can see we've got a little drum and this will actually mark a beat in every time we press it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the piece of music where I want the beat to be and I'm going to hit the drum. Now, 
and here and here so what I'm doing is I'm going through listening to music trying to find out where the beat is and hitting the drum button to drop the beat at that point so later on when I look at this with the rest of my video I'll know exactly where the beats are and where I want to edit to now you don't need to see me do this all the way through so uh, once you're finished, just hit the little tick in the bottom right hand corner and we'll move on to the next part. So here, when we go back onto the timeline, we can see we've got a number of dots under the music. And this is where I marked all the beats. So now when we edit the footage, we know exactly where we want all the clips to start and finish. It's actually quite a handy tool and it's not something I would have expected to get in a piece of software like this. What I've actually decided to do here, if you look at the music, where the bars are lower, the music's going to be quieter. Um, I want to finish my first scene here, so I've dropped it on the first line. Next, I'm going to go to the far right-hand side bar and hit the edit icon. I'm going to scroll it back up to the top to get the scissors and press cut. And then um, I'm going to delete the next part of the scene uh, by scrolling the icons up and then hitting the delete icon. And this will get me the first scene, how I like it. And there we go, we can see it's changed exactly where the music would go up. Um, now I recorded this straight from my phone to my computer and it actually cut the sound out after a while. So um, you won't be able to hear the sound, but you will be able to see exactly where all the beats are because they're marked in with the little dots underneath. So what I'm doing here on this piece of footage is I'm going to look where I want the cut to be. Uh, now the first one I actually hit a twig, so I don't want to use the first part of this. Um, so I'm only going to use the second part, which is it going through the woods. So um, just here where it starts to move forwards, I'm going to scroll down on the right again. I'm going to hit the scissors to cut. Then I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to scroll down the icons so I can select the piece of footage I want to delete and hit the delete button. And there we go. I've dropped in the second piece of my footage here. Again, it's a bit longer. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with a the marker. Then I'm going to hit the cut button. Uh, it's worth pointing out you can actually drag the edge of your footage over um, to make it trim. But I found this really tricky. Um, my fingers are maybe a bit fat. So um, I decided to go with cutting. But it might be more efficient if you want to just trim it by dragging the edge of the footage inwards. So next. I want to fly out of the woods and uh, look at this next scene here. So again, I'm going to go through, I'm going to find where I want it to start. I'm going to cut it and then carry on the way I have been going. So I'm guessing by now that you've got a good concept of how to cut the scene and delete it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to the next stage where I've got a speed ramp and I'm going to show you how we do this. For the speed ramp, I've got a piece of footage where I'm flying along a road. It's a bit long and I want to make it shorter, so I'm going to speed it up. So first thing I've got to do is get it in the right place. So I'm going to pinch down all the icons to make them smaller until I can see it. And then once I've found it, I'm going to hold down the piece of footage to select it. And then I'm going to drag it over to the left to make it the next scene in line. So here it is. So if we play now, we can see it goes from this scene, and then I jump to the road scene here. Now, I went back some forwards a few times, and uh, say this was a bit slow. So what I've decided to do is cut it to the length I want, and then from here, I'm just going to want to speed it up a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to hit the speed icon on the right hand side, and it's going to bring up the speed menu. Now in this menu, um, if we drag to the right, we can go up to four times speed. And if we go to the left, we can go down to a quarter speed. Now, if you do make it slower, you're likely to lose quality. So I wouldn't recommend doing this. So when I scroll through and look at different speeds, I can see for me, I like the speed at three times. So I'm gonna click on that and then press the tick button. And then it's gonna drop me back to the normal screen. So going through now, I'm going to line it up with a marker where I want it to finish and then cut it to the right length. Now again, you've seen me do this a few times, so I've decided to uh, fast forward and get to the part where I've decided to reverse some footage. And that brings me to this shot here. Now what I actually want is the drone coming from the sky and flying into the woods. 
This is going to be really tricky to film forwards because it's going to take a lot of skill to get it in the right place. So a bit of a cheat is to start where you want to finish, reverse out the woods and go up, and then reverse the footage. And this is going to give us the effect we want. So what I've done is I've cut this to the length I want it, and then look on the right hand side, and then hit the little reverse icon. So this is the scene how it looks now. And then when I hit the reverse icon, we get this little kind of a loading screen up. And this lets me know that it's put it in the right way. Now this did take a little while, so I decided to use my magical powers and speed time up. And it made it go a bit quicker. There we are. So now when we look at the screen, we can see instead of coming out of the woods, it actually just flies straight into the woods. Now as I'm watching this, I think it's really slow on the way in, but it's a nice speed when we get in the woods. So what I want to do is speed up the first half and keep the second half the same speed. So where I want the speed to change, I'm going to put a cut in, I'm going to then select the footage and then change it to double speed. I'm going to hit the little tick icon and it's going to take me back to the screen. So now when we go through, we've got it going faster into the woods, and then it slows down just as we get there, and that's what I was after. So there we go, not looking too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on and uh, finish putting the scenes together, get them all the speed I want. And then we can look at each clip and make sure it's at the brightness and colour that we want. To do this, I'm going to click on the scene I want. And then I'm going to hit the tone icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. And this is going to bring up this screen here. Now, this was a bit dark, so I'm going to boost up the brightness. And I'm going to hit contrast. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast in there. Now the saturation I'm fairly happy with. Um, if you drop it down the way to the left, you'll get it black and white, it's worth pointing out. But I'm gonna pretty much leave it as it is. You can also adjust the temperature. By moving to the left, you'll make it colder. And by moving to the right, you'll make it look warmer. You've also got the option for fig netting. So I can make the corners darker by dragging it to the left and uh, getting rid of it by dragging it to the right. And we can also look at sharpening and making it a bit softer Again, I'm happy with how it is, so I'm going to leave it like that. Once we're happy with all the changes we've made, we can hit the tick, and it's edited our clip to how we like it. Now I'm going to scroll through some more, and I'm going to see if there's any other clips worth editing. And I know this scene here, I'd really like to edit this a bit. Uh, so again, I'm going to click on the tone icon, and I'm going to make it a bit brighter. I'm going to put a little bit more contrast in there. And I'm pretty much going to leave it like this. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation in there as well. Um, in hindsight, this maybe is a bit too much. But have a play with it. Um, get it perfect. And when you're happy, hit the little tick button. And it will drop you back onto your timeline. So there we go. Now I'm pretty sure this is all the uh, colour grading I needed to edit. Uh, next, I'm just going to mention, uh, you can control the volume by uh, clicking on the little volume button here and you can press it up and down to make it louder or quieter. Now, I know you can't hear the music in this, um, but I didn't feel it was necessary for this video. It's very intuitive and I think you could work it out if you needed to do this in your video. Next, we're going to look at adding a title. To do this, I'm going to hit the T in the bottom right hand corner and it's going to bring up the title screen. So down the bottom we can choose the style of title we like. Uh, once you've found one you like, you can then hit the title and then you can type in the title of your video. I'm going to call this one Woodland. Press done and hit the tick button. And there we go, it's dropped it in. Um, this is not a very dramatic one, they do have quite a lot of choice. So have a little play around, have some fun and see what you like. So the next, I'm going to hit the little wand icon, and this is going to bring up the color grading. So these are um, pre-made LUTs, and you can just choose one you like, and it will put it over every clip in your video. 
Now, this won't work for every video. Um, I quite like this one, so I decided to add it. Obviously, it's completely optional. If it doesn't work for you, don't add it. Once you're done, hit the little arrow in the top left-hand corner of the screen, and it will take you back to your timeline. Next, we're going to look at transitions. These are the little boxes between each clip. At the moment, it's got a single line going through the box. We're going to click on that, and it's going to bring up this screen. The first icon is no transition. The second one is going to be a cross dissolve. The third one is going to be blurred. We're going to have a fade to black, a fade to white, and a swipe. You've got to be careful if you choose to use transitions because they can make your video actually look worse sometimes. I've decided to go for a cross dissolve here just so it blends the woodlands into each other a little bit better. I'm happy with this video now. I've decided it's fully edited and I'm going to hit the little uh, share icon in the top right hand corner and this is going to allow me to export it. I've decided to export it at 1080 which is the maximum you can and then we're going to have to wait a while for it to download and what this actually does is it's going to save it to your phone. Now this does take a while so again I've used my magic powers and I've sped up time. Once you're finished, it will give you the option to share on Facebook, Instagram and other places. You can also hit the three little dots and decide if you want to share it somewhere else. Now what I've actually decided to do is just to save it to my phone and then from there I'm going to come out of the DJI Fly app and then open up the YouTube app and I can upload it from here. And if you haven't already, you'll need to download the YouTube app and make an account. From here, we can hit the little camera icon at the top of the screen and then choose the video we want to download from your phone from the selection. Once we've done this, you can just hit next and this will bring you through to the upload screen. So in here, we just can fill out the title and then uh, add a little description. I've put mine down as unlisted as I don't want this to go up straight away. Um, I'll drop a link in the video description down below if you want to see the unlisted version. And then once you're happy with that, we're going to hit upload in the top right hand corner and then it'll start uploading your video. Now again, this does take a really long time to upload, so um, I've sped through this bit. And then we can see here, this is the final footage.
so there it is. That was our finished video made entirely on our phone, entirely with the DJI Fly app. Now what I will say about the app is it actually did a lot more than I would expect it to do. Um, it was great to have the option for speed ramp, it was great to be able to reverse the clips and I also like the fact that you could add the beats to the music so you can line all the clips up. I did find it really fiddly trying to use my fingers on a small phone screen to edit the footage and it did take a fair amount of time. For me this was one of the biggest downsides. The only other thing is you don't have as much control over transitions and some other editing techniques that you take for granted on the PC. And although the music isn't a real great selection, you can import your own, so I'm going to overlook that fact. Okay guys, so that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one.